I got a few quips, all right? Anecdotes, limericks from this weekend. I got one fire story. A bit of an all-night bender, all right? And by bender, I mean the scenario that I hated being in every second of it. So if you guys don't know, I went to Las Vegas this past weekend for one of my good friends Stans' birthday. We had a big couples trip planned with me, Cutie, Stans, Rochelle, Ari, Aiden, and myself. And Aatrox, if I didn't mention it. But it was, it was basically like us eight people. And coincidentally, every single person who has ever been in Among Us lobby with OTV be in Vegas that same weekend. Unironically, it was a coincidence. Like, I had planned this trip because I had done a lot of the planning for it. I had bought the tickets for it about a month and a half ago. And what was f***ed up, the first thing that happened when Stans arrived is he walked in to the Palazzo where I booked a room for him. He ran into Myth going up the elevator, Myth going down. They met. And apparently a bunch of people in that group were also staying at the same exact hotel, which was, again, crazy coincidence. It doesn't seem like a coincidence, and it was awkward in a, in a way. I'm not going to lie to you. It was awkward because I would go up to someone, and they'd be like, what are you doing here? Almost as if I was crashing this OTV and Friends weekend at Vegas. It was almost as if they had created this group list, and in conversation making it, we're like, should we invite Ludwig? And then they were like, Nah. <laughs> and then they saw me and they were like, <laughs> so it was like, it was like slightly awkward. If you guys remember, right, right before I left for Vegas, I believe it was Thursday, I had told a story on stream about getting my ID, my identification, a necessary component of many day to day tasks driving, flying, drinking, and in my case, also gambling. This is a necessary thing you need. Identification, all right? It's pretty much half of the entire movie super bad. Anyway, I unfortunately, I don't have an ID or a passport. I lost them 18 months ago and I've been coasting ever since. Anytime I get pulled over, I just say, ah, I lost it a couple days ago. And then they're usually like, ah, get out of here, whitey. And I'm like, <laughs> and then anytime I need it for drinking, usually I just have someone else buy it and I'll just like drink it on the side, you know, a little like 17 year old shit. So all these, all these admittedly very privileged situations have allowed me to survive without an ID for 18 months. Fact of the matter is I didn't have an ID. So I went to the DMV and I only got my provisional identification. This is the shitty paper ID that basically says, I'm gonna get an ID soon, but right now I don't have one, and the people at the DMV printed this out for me, and that's all it is. It's very, very useless. I went to Vegas with two things. My provisional ID I got from the DMV a few days before, and my expired ID, right? Those are the two things I went with. And I had called ahead of time, and I was assured that most of the time, I would be fine. It's gonna be a pain in the ass, but hey, if you have both those things, they can look at the physical ID, they can match it to the provisional ID, and they can allow you to gamble, drink, whatever it is, right? I got to Vegas, I booked in, I, I checked in, and what did I know? First thing the person asked for after I gave them my provisional ID was for an expired ID. I had it, bang, I was prepared this weekend. This is an important part of the story. Lock this in your mind. I have two pieces of paper, expired ID, driver's license, and a provisional paper ID that is not super useful, but with the conjunction of the expired one is useful, right? Okay, good, understood, moving on. You know, I, I gambled for a bit. I played some craps. I I, uh, I was able to gamble, right? Basically, you go up to security. You show them those two things. They give you a wristband. You're able to gamble. It's all fine and dandy. And if you've never played craps, and you are someone who is who is interested in gambling, I think it's the most fun game in Vegas. If the table's even somewhat hot or you're breaking even and everybody's rolling around and you got one guy who's somewhat seasoned who calls out these oddly specific things like, come on, shooter, let's get a yo, which just means, hey, guy who's rolling the dice right now, get an 11. But it's fun to just yell that out because that's a cooler way to say that. 
and it's the only appropriate time in a casino to say the word shooter. And if you aren't familiar with that, then you should go to Stanza's chat because he's someone who needs to learn that lesson. So make sure to go to Stanza's chat and remind him that the only appropriate time to say shooter at a casino is when you're playing craps. The only time. Every other time, probably don't say that. Saturday rolls around and we have two major things planned for Saturday. Because like I said, I was not alone with my friends in Vegas. Also in Vegas were all of Offline TV and friends. And I had ran in to Pokimane. And this is the exact interaction that happened. I saw Pokey walking because she stayed at the same hotel as me. Cutie actually spotted. She said, that's Pokey. And I go, Pokey! And then Pokey turns um, the other fucking way, keeps walking and having a conversation with her friend and never looks back at me ever. <laughs> So I sent her a text. <laughs> Fucking good one. Nice donut wall. <laughs> to which she replied, who? And after a little bit of sorting out, she realized that I was the person who yelled out her name and it was not some random person who was interested in Pokimane or she just probably more realistically didn't hear me at all. And Pokey, very sweet of her, invited me out to go clubbing. I'm gonna ask you a question. Do you think I'm a guy who knows his way around a club. Okay, all right, Abe, it's not, oh, okay, all right, this is not your opportunity to Omega lol Ludwig at the club. All right, Abe, who shows up to the club in a fucking tank top. The bouncer's is like, oh, my shift's over? Oh, yeah, come here, Abe. Yeah, yeah, take over my shift. Thank God, thank God. Hey, you're looking good today. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with the club. And performing at this club was hit artist, DJ Mustard, who, if you don't know, made the song Ballin'. And that's pretty much the only one I'm super familiar with. You might know DJ Mustard a little better and you might be more familiar. Honestly, he's not like, he's more of a producer than like a main artist. Whatever, it's DJ Mustard. I don't really give a shit. And that's one of the things planned. The other thing that I had planned was a show, a performance. Uh, it's a show in Vegas called Absinthe. So the plan was go to this show, Absinthe, and then go to the club afterwards because I, I was blessed by Pokey who, who basically like hooked me up. She was like, you text this person, they'll get you all hooked up and then you just can get a table and it'll be chill and you can get in, yada, yada. And I was like, super sweet. Thank you so much, Pokey. So I text the guy and he's a promoter and he's talking to me like we've been friends for fucking years. Yo, what's up, bro? You coming to the marquee tonight? Sheesh, man, that's gonna be fucking lit. All right, here's the situation. We got a cabana, but I think that's whack. Let's upgrade you to a grand cabana, $4,000. What do you get? All-inclusive, $2,500 drink tab. And at this point, like, Pokey's the one who, who who put me in contact with this guy. And I was like, I don't want to say fuck no and be a and back out, bitch out of this. I, I'm not familiar with the club. I have literally never gone clubbing in my life. So I was like, all right, you know, 4,000 for eight people, but you get a $2,500 drink tab, which basically means that you can drink up to $2,500 worth of alcohol and they won't charge you. Doesn't seem too crazy because then it's basically $1,500 for eight people, which is about like a little under $200 a person. That's not too bad. So uh, I book it. Uh, I, I give the card out. I, I pay for it all. And, and that's the plan. And this is crazy to me. He's like, yeah, it, it opens at 10 p.m. We're going to show up at 11 p.m. DJ Mustard performs at 1 a.m. And I'm like, motherfucker, he's showing up at craps o'clock. All right, this is, that's my craps time. That's when I go to the craps table to play craps for three hours. This is a little weird champ of DJ Mustard. I wish he would have known my craps schedule before he planned to show up so late. Whatever, it is what it is. That's the plan. Show at Absinthe at nine. It ends at 11. Go to the club right after. Bing, bang, boom. That is my plan. Both of those things are gonna require my ID, my identification. The day goes pretty swimmingly. And then we go to the show. Uh, not too much to say about the show. The guy spoke like uh, Beetlejuice if you're a boomer and Rick from Rick and Morty if you're a zoomer. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the show Absinthe. I had never had. It was something that I think Rochelle and Stans wanted to go to. But the guy, he just talked about dicks and cum the whole time. I was like shocked. I was guffawed. It was basically the most crass stand-up I have ever heard. And the thing is, I, I talk about that too. Like, I'll talk about, you know, like dicks and cum and jerking off and yep, cum and sucking and fucking. But this guy made train wrecks look PG. They had a five-minute bit 
about how what if a yeti came in this tent and the and the cum filled up the tent to such a high degree that to get out of the tent the only thing we could do was eat out of the tent can eat out all the cum it was like that <laughs> and everybody in the crowd was like mostly boomers like 30 and 40 year old boomers so they were like every time he said cum they were like <laughs> but what was funny about it is he would do like little super crass bits and his name was the gazillionaire and he had like no hair but he had like just a little bit of hair on top like uh kind of like danny devito and matilda after doing the bit he would have these amazing amazing acrobatic performers come on just like the most insanely fit gymnasts do the most insane shit like cirque du soleil level for like 10 minutes we'd all clap we'd be like this is fucking amazing this is you know, bouncing on 15 chairs tall. And then he would come out and be like, you ever wiping your asshole and you're just thinking, man, uh, why can't I order room service for a bitch to lick my asshole? And then he'd be like, all right, let's bring out the Russian acrobats. And that was, that was the whole night. That was the whole night. During this night, I decided to have a drink. At Absinthe, I had an Absinthe drink. Makes a lot of sense. And I go up and I gave her my provisional ID, my paper ID. Bear in mind, these are important key items, all right? Think Phoenix Wright, these are key items. We need to keep these in mind at all time. So I gave her the provisional. She said, do you have your expired? And I said, oh, I got it right here. And she said this, and I quote, the most important thing I heard all weekend. Oh my God, this is so important you have this. Honestly, if you didn't have this, you would be screwed for everywhere in Vegas. Like. People do this all the time, and it's just game over for them. And I was like, yeah, thank God I have it, though. <laughs> Get my drink. Watch the rest of it. What if you're coming, and then a bear walks in, and you're coming harder, and then you're like a furry, whatever, yada, yada, yada. We leave obstacle one of the night, and it is now 11. It is time to go to DJ Mustard. I don't know if that's what he does. I think that's DJ Cali, and I converted it, but whatever. I, I didn't... We'll get to that. Before I go, I decide with Cutie to go back to my room to dress up a little snazzier. I got this suit jacket specifically for DJ Mustard. Well, I actually love this jacket, by the way, with the, the, the pop collar and the line. I loved it. What a beautiful jacket it was. And she had an amazing dress, amazing dress. We looked great, great couple. So we get there at a pretty good time, right? You know, like enough people are here. DJ Mustard's an hour from coming out so we can get a little drinks going before DJ Mustard comes. But what I notice is an insanely long line. And Vegas is this weird capitalist heart where there's this huge line, but I'm like, well, fuck that line. I bought a Grand Cabana. I thought, I'm not a clubber, that this was somewhat of a, you know, exclusive thing. That I was able to maybe skip lines because I had paid a large sum of money. And because of the large sum of money I, I paid, I would be treated as a higher patron. And so I went to the, the, the final check-in area. I skipped the line. I said, <laughs> peasants. And I said, sir, I have a grand cabana. Could I be seated with my friends? I'm sorry, the pores were just making me sweat on the way here. To which the sir in front of me, the bouncer goes, uh, yeah, this is the table line. There was a different longer line downstairs for people who didn't have tables. I mean, this line is, it's, it's an hour maybe. I'm looking at it like this is an hour, maybe even 90 minutes sitting here. Cause the thing is, there were people who were walking up, you know, it'd be like eight women. And then the guy would be like, Shh, come on in, ladies. It'd be like one dude who had like three strands of hair on his head who daps him up. And he's like, hey, my man. The dude's like five, six, look like, looks like he's melting. I'm like, that guy must have dropped fucking 50K at the marquee every goddamn day. Let's him in. All right, there's some level of wealth payment that gets you through. But the fucked up part is because they're letting all these like rich people in and attractive women in, the line's not moving. So I text a promoter and he's like, all right, I can figure this out for you. I'm like, great, thank you. I would love that. Expecting him to come out, let me in. He just sends me a message. He says, talk to Justin and treat him well. And I look at the message, I go, what the fuck does that, who is Justin? First of all, it's spelled J-U-S-T-E-N. That's not even a real name. It's a fake name, all right? And what does treat him well mean? What does that mean? What does treat him well mean? That means nothing to me. I say, how much is treating well? 
just how much how much do I have to treat Justin well? How well do I have to treat him? I gotta suck this man. What do I gotta do to get through this line? Just a little bit of a backstory. I originally bought a cabana, and the guy said, "Oh." Fuck, you should have gotten the Grand Cabana. It's closer to where everyone is. And I was like, all right, well, it's too late. And he says, no, 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 no. If you just bring $500 and tip that to the waitress, they'll just comp the uh, the boot, the buff to you. They'll just basically give it to you, the higher model. And I was like, that actually sounds like a good deal. Giving $500 to like a service worker, I'm down for, for an upgrade in this in this place. That's great. I'm down for that. This 500 is important because after I asked how well do I need to treat Justin, he replies, give him $500. And all of a sudden, I am catapulted from my normal comfort zone into some weird ass GTA scene where I'm trying to grease people to skip a line to get into a club. And so I'm like, all right, uh, I guess I'll give this guy 500. I'll Venmo the waitress or Cash App or PayPal or some shit. I don't fucking know. This is weird, whatever. I'll just give her 30 doge, call it a day, bing, bang, boom. I start walking down. I pull the 500 out of my wallet. I'm holding it in my hand, just as a visual so you guys can understand this. I'm basically holding this, all right? And I'm rolling up. And I go to the back area where the guy had once rejected me. And I'm like, hey, remember me? And I pulled the 500 and I go, how about we skip this line? Very smooth, very cool. To which he replies, no, what do you, what do you think this is? No, I, no, I'm not the guy. You gotta go to the line. He didn't take the money. I just get fucking no megalol. I feel like such an idiot. So embarrassing. I've never been to the club before. I didn't know what the etiquette was. I thought I was just gonna slap him a fiver. He'd be like, hey, we fucking, you know, sheesh like we're boys from back in the day. Straight up raised together. Just no megalold me. I go to the back and I'm like messaging my guy. I'm like, what, what's, what is this? And he says, you had to find Justin. That literally wasn't Justin. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I see this other guy walking by also wearing the same attire. And I literally have no reason to have suspected that this was Justin, but he he looked like exactly, and I'm saying exactly, like 006 from the movie Goldeneye to a T. And I saw him, and I just I, and I just instinctively I went Justin. And as he's walking, he goes, Yeah. And I pull out the 500, and I go, My friend says you can get me through this line. And he looks down at my wad of cash and he goes, how much is that? And I go, 500. And he says, and I'm not fucking, he goes, yeah, that'll do. Takes the 500, escorts us to the front. All of a sudden, people start looking at us as we're walking. Before we were jabronis, basically doing laps back and forth. Now we're being led by Justin who I didn't mention this before, is next to this Russian 6'6 motherfucker, 275, pure muscle. Basically, Nick Merckx if you just stendomagged him. Just huge right next to him. The guy who rejected me earlier, they have a little quiet conversation, him and Justin. Begrudgingly, he looks at me, he goes, all right, come in, come in. And all eight of us get into the marquee. Shit, bro, that felt cool. I felt very cool. <laughs> I felt incredibly, incredibly cool. And that's the problem with Las Vegas. Right before you're about to go in, there's one final boss, Cerberus, to enter the Hades of nightclubs, all right? And this three-headed beast was looking for one thing in particular. It was, of course, identification. The guy, when it's my turn, says ID, and I give him my provisional ID. And he looks at this, he goes, no, 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 I need, I need the expired ID. And I'm like, bitch, say less. Look at my wallet. <laughs> Sorry, what, just, yeah. Just give me, just give me, no, oh, it's probably my, I don't have it. I don't have my ID. My expired ID is gone. But I'm thinking like, Bitch, I just paid $500 to skip the line. It's literally in the hands of the giant Russian mobster looking dude. There's no universe that this is where it ends, right? 
So the guy's like, you need ID. And so I says to him, I says, how much? Because I understand how it works now, all right? I'm not the baby boy who didn't club anymore. I'm upgraded, okay? So I look in the guy and I says to him, how much? I got a little cocky too. I was like, bitch, you can look me up on Wikipedia. Just tell me the price, okay? And I, and I, and I sit back. And he goes, so there's actually no realm you're going to get into this club right now. It requires identification. This is a law thing. I don't know why you thought I would get bribed to go through. Obviously, I'd lose my job instantly. So you need to get an ID. You need to get the fuck out. I look at big Russian mobster who, to this point, had been very kind to me. He looks down at me, and he just pats me on the head. You need ID. But I don't feel too bad. Because... I probably just left the ID in my other pants. We have to make a giant trek. We have to walk all the way out of, uh, of the casino, which if you've never been to a casino is a fucking pain in the ass because there's no exit signs. And I have to get a taxi. I, and I tell the taxi, wait here. So I get back and I'm like, taxi, hold. Cutie stays in the taxi as hostage, right? Because I haven't paid the taxi driver. She's staying in there as hostage in the taxi. Me running up, right? To try to get back. Because here's the problem now. It is already 12.20, 12.30. If I get this frame one and get back frame two, it's going to be about 1 a.m. I'm going to miss DJ Mustard's first song. I can't miss DJ Mustard's first song. Come on. As I'm running through, I'm not fucking with you. Ludwig? Ludwig. Hey, what's up? What's up, man? You're Ludwig, aren't you? Yeah. Yep. How's it, how's it going, man? It's just like this kid who's there, who noticed me, and I have just the worst interaction. Kid's super sweet, very nice guy, but he's there with his girlfriend, and his girlfriend just looks at him, he's like, who's this? <laughs> All right, a picture? All right, hey man, have a great rest of your night. He's like, have a great night. Back to sprinting. Pause. I remind you that in this entire weekend, there were like 50 people from OTV and Friends meandering throughout Las Vegas, who happened to also be staying at the same casino I was staying at. To this point, I had not met up with them because I did not go there with them. And I, I felt almost, you know, when you feel like weird, like they had this group activity I wasn't invited to, which is fine. You know, I'm not like tight with them. I've never met them in person, but I didn't want to like inject myself in a lot of things. So the first event to hang out with anyone was at the club. So I had seen zero people to this point. I've, I've literally seen zero people. And as I'm fucking, you know, fan out of the way, you know, dealer out of the way. All right, cocktail waitress. Here's a $5. People don't tip you enough. Out of the way. Sprinting through this casino, I run into Abe and Wendy. Which I am so happy to run into Abe and Wendy because I love them both. But I am on a crunch. And there's an additional fold. They got engaged the same exact day. You know, any other situation, right? Any other day of the fucking life they are going to live. I could be like, hey guys, I really can't talk right now. I gotta go, I'm gonna rush. This is my first time meeting them in the person and they just got engaged. My first impression would be, peace, which I couldn't do. So I stop and I'm like, hey, <laughs> congratulations. And they're like, Ludwig. And Abe's like fucking guns out as he always is. He's like, yeah, hey, what's up, man? Yeah, whatever. It was really cool. Yeah. Hey, give me a hug. And I, you know, we have a conversation for a little bit. Conversation ends. Back to it. Sprint up. Get to my hotel room. And finally, I get there and I'm rummaging. Trying to find this expired ID that is the only way I can get into this club that I have paid at this point $4,000 for. And I said I would cover it as like a birthday gift. So this is $4,000 that I'm trying to experience. $3,500 for like the table and the drinks. $500 to tip the person to get into the thing. All right? So basically, I'm I, I'm looking for my ID. I'm looking for my ID. I'm, I'm finding, I'm finding, I'm finding. I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking. I lost it. At some point between that exchange with the waitress at Absinthe, who I know I got the card back from because she was so adamant that it was the most valuable piece of material on earth, and going to get ready, I lost my ID. 
I wanted to hang out with like all these people from OTV and friends who I'd never, I've never met these people before. Like in person, I, I met some of them at the shoot, of course, but like a lot of them, I, I haven't met a lot, or maybe I've only met one or two times. Also, it's, you know, birthday weekend. I want to hang out with my dogs, get crunk on the dance floor. I've never gone clubbing ever. I don't play the marquee. It's totally fair. I do think it's a little fucked up. They still pocketed my $500. That's kind of weird. I did just that. I just got straight up scammed for that. I have zero of those five hundred dollars, and I got zero values of those five hundred dollars. That's just gone for you know eternity. And so I go back to the cab, and Cutie's like, well, "What happened?" I was like, I, "I couldn't find it." She paid the taxi. We walked slowly back. But Cutie always the go getter. She's like, Let, "Let's try to find it." And I remember <laughs> that's so Raven Jimmy Neutron moment. Brain blast. Wait. I remember when we left Absinthe, which is at Caesar's Palace, everybody wanted to go to the bathroom. And while they were in the bathroom, because I took a quick pee pee, I decided to sit at a blackjack table by myself. And I had gambled and won $75. And that's the only time in between the show and the club where I used my ID guaranteed. And so we embark on a simple mission to find that table and find my ID. We finally get there. It's like 2 a.m. already, right? And I go to the table, the exact table, and I go, hey, I, I was here earlier. I, I gambled for a bit, and, and I, had I had a provisional ID. I showed it to him, and I also had an expired ID. And then the floor master, who if you don't know, there's usually the dealers and the person who, who like looks over the dealers. She's there. She goes, no, there's no, we've never had an expired ID. <laughs> What? It's like, we've never, I've been here since six. I have never seen an expired ID ever. You were not here. You were not at this table. And I had drank literally one drink. I'm looking at the exact bathroom they were peeing in. I'm looking at the table. I'm looking at the exact Caesar's Palace chips. The only time I'd gamble there the whole weekend. And I'm like, okay. So I go to security. I'm like, hey, do you guys get an IDs passed in? They're like, no. So it's over. Now, last ditch effort. It's over. It's GG. Whatever. I'm trying to make the best of a bad situation. I would have loved to have gone. It would have been a great time. It would have been fun. But I still really enjoy gambling. I'm not a club guy at the end of the day. I, neither is Cutie. So I could probably have as much fun, if not more, gambling. And also, there's people who didn't go to the club. Like Abe and Wendy. Abe and Wendy are not... <laughs> the Abe, I was, I was like, are you going? He's like, no, I'm an old fucking man. I'm not going to go to the club. I'm going to gamble. So there's people I can hang out with. I'm like, okay, hell yeah. So I go back to the casino... And I'm like, let me just gamble. Because I've been gambling at this exact ca casino at the Venetian for the past two days. Fuck it. Let's make a good time out of a bad situation. And so I go to gamble with Abe. I sit down at a table just to like get some money out. Just like to get a little angst out. And they're like, ID. And I'm like, yeah, here it is. And that's when I realized that this problem was permanent. Uh, sir, I need an expired ID along with this for you to be able to gamble. You could go to security to get a wristband with your expired ID and your provisional ID that would allow you to gamble for the remainder of the day. But unfortunately, sir, without that, we won't be able to do it. I go to security. They literally photocopied my expired ID and the provisional ID. I was like, you guys, you guys have this, right? I had a picture of my ID. I was like, you can look at a picture of my ID. I pulled up my goddamn you laugh, you lose with the monkey. I was like, look, it farts, right? I flinch here. <laughs> Isn't that funny? They call their manager. I'm there for 20 minutes. They're like, yeah, sir. Um, sorry. It, we just can't get you a wristband without that expired ID physically here. And I have no idea where this expired ID is. It's not anywhere I'd previously used it. It's just completely gone. And not only am I not able to go to the club, I can't gamble. I can't do anything in Las Vegas. We had plans the next day to sports bet, and I can't do that either. I can't bet on the game. Being in Las Vegas and being under 21 is the same as being in Las Vegas and having no ID. It is the least fun ever because it's just a constant FOMO, FOMO, FOMO. Everything that happens around you is just, oh, FOMO. Gambling, FOMO. Clubbing, FOMO. Drinking, FOMO. Just to have like a crumb. Just anything. I do something not so legal per se. I go to a slot machine without an ID, but $100 in my wallet. And I put my 100 in the slot machine and like train wreck told me to, I max bet. Ding, 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 ding. And I worked that $100 down to $3 with Cutie silently behind me, just trying to support me. Doing great, honey. Surely next hit's the hit. 
A waitress comes over. She goes, would you like anything to drink? Knowing I don't have an ID, I go, just a water. Because I had been walking. It's almost 3 a.m. now. And she goes, sir, could I see your ID? <laughs> you want to see my ID? <laughs> my For the water. She goes, yeah. The uh, Could I see your ID, sir? So I hand her my provisional ID. She goes, ooh, sir, I'm sorry. This won't work for gambling. Has, have other people let you sit here? I lie. Yeah. She goes, no, no. That's not company policy. You need the expired ID in conjunction with your provisional ID to be able to gamble. I'm sorry, you're going to have to leave. I cash out of the slot machine three fucking dollars. I throw it on the ground for some soul to find at some point during their gambling experience. Hopefully to lift their spirits. Just depressed. And in one last ditch effort, one final hurrah, because they give you bracelets, right? That say, you're allowed to gamble for every day. And I had my Friday bracelet still. I go up to a different security desk. So I go up to this guy. I'm like, hey man, can I just get a new bracelet? He's like, yeah, you staying here? I'm like, yeah, give my room number. He's like, oh, dope, yeah, great, great, great. He's like, can I get your, uh, your ID? I hand him my provisional. He's like, huh. And he clearly has no clue on what to do at the moment. He's like kind of staring at it. And I'm like, yeah, I also got a picture of my ID right here on my phone. I just put it there. I'm trying to act confident. He's like, okay. He stares at it for a while. And I think maybe, just maybe, he's just going to be like, oh, yeah, fuck it. Let's let him through. And he says, give me a second. And I'm like, ugh. And he walks a couple steps away. And I'm like, it's GG. And he comes back and he goes, is this you? And he had my expired ID. Against all fucking odds, after five hours of looking for this lost piece of plastic, some random security guard had my ID. And I'm like, how do you have that? Sir, you have to tell me how, how you have that. And he goes, uh, yeah, I wrote it down. At 11 o'clock, somebody had turned this in. It, it fell. Apparently, when I had gone back to my hotel to change after the show, it literally just fell out of my pocket. It just fell out. And some God-blessed soul found it, handed it in to the Venetian security, and then he gave it to me on my last-ditch effort. I promise you, I was ready to give it all up. After the lady called me out for just sitting at a slot machine and I had to cash out $3, I was like, oh. I pull out the only chip I have in my pocket. I give him 25 bucks. I'm like, hey, take this green chip. He's like, are you sure? I'm like, yes. Yes, please take this. He's like, oh, yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> and I am saved. He gives me a wristband, and I'm able to gamble for the rest of the weekend. And that night, I start gambling at 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. with Myth, Atrioc, Mo, and myself. I win two thousand dollars after everybody comes back from the club i'm like how was the club they're like vibes are off i was like what they're like yeah it wasn't that great we left early let's go just a fucking beautiful storyline skipped out on dj mustard's bad set <laughs> got to gamble won a bunch of money and found my fucking id which i am now going to frame and hang up in my goddamn room i always say this things will just work out how they're supposed to. I believe that. And maybe I'm wrong. And maybe it feels like life's kicking you the balls and it's not how it's supposed to work out. And sometimes that happens, but I'm like, yeah, that's just how it's supposed to happen. When I get kicked in the balls and fired, I'm like, yeah, that was probably supposed to happen to me. This has been so cemented in me, this philosophy that like, it'll work out. Whatever it is, it'll work out. Cause that's how life works. It has to work out. Cause it always keeps turning. Things have to work out. Cause what's the other option? Not working out? That's not how it works. And my God, it worked out. And that was uh, the most stressful evening. Sunday was just the greatest day I've ever had in Las Vegas. Woke up. We had brunch at Black Tap, which is known for having insane shakes. We uh, we bet a bunch of money on the Suns game. I bet uh, for the Suns winning. Put like $500 on it. Suns fucking won. I was up literally $4,000 at the end of Sunday night. $4,000 fucking dollars. I have never left Vegas up at all. Now, that's still the case because I ended up literally betting all of that $4,000 trying to get up $6,000 because I wanted a really nice watch I found that was $6,000. And so I actually have left with $100 up. Um, but, you know, I, at one point I was up a lot of money. Uh-oh.